What up everybody? We are going to be talking forces today. Uh, today's video is going to be on um, number one types of forces and then number two talking about the force diagram. Um, they both go hand in hand so I'm going to continue this as just one large video. Um, knowing the types of forces will allow you to create a good force diagram. Ladies and gentlemen, force diagrams, just to let you know, it's going to be something we will be doing until probably the rest of the year. So if you can, you need to be able to create good force diagrams, I'm going to talk about the couple of good steps in order to really think about in order to create those good force diagrams. First things first, in class today we talked about different or two different interactions. We have what we are going to call contact forces. And contact forces are again going to be things that are in direct contact with each other. A few examples that we have is going to be what we call the tension force. Again, tension forces are in strings, springs, ropes. Um, notice an example of it, I just kind of drew it out here. Here is a rope touching this box. Remember that tension force is going to be going in the direction of the rope. So anytime you have that, you know that the force on the box is going to be in the direction of the rope. Um, normal forces, normal forces are between two surfaces. Um, you will see that it always creates that 90 degree angle with the surface. So whenever I think about this again, I think about a 90 degree angle in order to work that through. Um, between any two surfaces, if they're in contact, you're going to run into a normal force there. And frictional force, um, the frictional force um, that is with anything that is moving, that is rubbing up against a surface. Um, normally those surfaces are not 100% smooth. So if you think about our surface here, I think about, um, I drew a little thought bubble here. If you think about a rough surface, and I can even make this rough rather than just a point. Think about a rough surface here versus a rough surface here. These surfaces are going to rub up against each other. And if you think about it, as this surface moves to the right, so I kind of have the velocity vector saying, as this velocity or as this object moves to the right, those surfaces are going to rub up against each other, creating this frictional force to the left. And I think about the brush example to really get that one across. Um, there are two types of frictional forces. There is the good old static frictional force, which is not moving. In kinetic means it is moving. Um, so um, we will look at different examples of this. One example that I think about is static is if it's sitting on a ramp, but it's not moving. So you look at this box sitting on this ramp, it would normally move down, however, it's not. And so because it's not moving, that is a static frictional force holding it up. Or if I was trying to push a box and it's not going to move, that's a static frictional force. It would normally move, but there's, it's not and kinetic would of course be moving. So those are the contact forces. Going on over to the other side, we have long range forces. First off, the easiest one that we see is a gravitational force. Um, it, is a, um, it is between objects with mass. So any two objects with mass, there would be a gravitational force between them. Um, the biggest ones that we look at um, are uh, large sized objects like planets, um, as well as, uh, well, we can look at like the moons or different things like that. Those are really massive objects. Those are the ones that we're going to focus our attention on. There are other ones between, let's say, the pencil and you right now. Um, we'll talk more about that in class. It's a little bit more of an advanced topic there. That force between those two objects, the pencil and you, is just very, very small. It's not going to play a, a factor into our force diagrams because it is it can be ignored. It can be neglected. I always tell you to keep the current color scream and don't ask me that again. Um, and then um, you guys started mentioning different things in class when we were making our list here. There is the electrostatic force. This is between... Um, charged objects. So you might be able to look at something that is charged positive, something that is charged negative, let's say a proton and an electron, or between two electrons. Um, we will take a deeper look into that. Other people said magnets in class. Yes, there is FM, the um, uh, technique, it's electromagnetic force. Um, we will not touch base on that in class. However, you can assume that's a long-range force because it is happening across a distance. 
So, real quickly, those are all of our forces. Make sure you know those like the back of your hand. Those are really important to make sure that you could just look at something and be like, that has to have a gravitational force. That has to have a normal force. That has to be a frictional force. Um, and go from there. The next bit that we are going to talk about are force diagrams. What's the point of a force diagram? Force diagram is a way for us to show all of the forces acting on a system. A system can be one object. A system can be many objects. Um, you get to select your system. So that's a very nice thing later on in problem. By selecting your system appropriately, you will see that you can actually make things a little bit easy on yourself. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail, but a system is just whatever you're talking about. If your forces on what object. The steps. Ah, uh, come on. Go back to there. Steps. Um, so, number one. First thing you need to do is select your system. Number two, you are going to represent it with a dot. Number three, you are going to draw force vectors representing the amount and direction of the force. And so after you select your system, what I want you to do is think about what objects are touching it. Based upon what objects are touching it, you're going to have to go through your force list and say, hey, let me like, just write them out, FT, FG, oh, I'm sorry, um, that's not a contact force, FT, um, FFS, FFK, and FN. And I would say, okay, is there any strings touching on it? Okay, maybe then you're not going to put a tension force. Is there any static frictional force? So is it not moving but wants to move? Okay, if it is, write it down. And so you're going to think about what objects are touching it, and that's going to allow you to pick what force you want to do, or which one you want to include. And then label what forces are equal with congruent markers. Um, one last thing that I forgot to add in here, it's actually the most important thing. This is going to stop any of those misconceptions. Use on by notation. If you fall away from this, you will get hamburger alert. Gu guarantee it. You will find misconceptions if you don't use on by notation. So um, those are steps. Let us go through a quick little example of what a good force diagram would look like. So let me actually draw a flat line here. There we go. We are going to look at the simplest case. This is a box sitting on a table. So step one. Select your system. Select my system by drawing a dotted line around it like so. Then what do I do is I represent that box with a dot. Remember that dot is representing my system. I might even want to label it up here just to let people know my system is the box. And then I think about, okay, what objects are acting on this? First things first. A pretty common one to say is gravity, right? The Earth is pulling down on this box. That is a long-range force. It might not be touching it, but it is interacting. Which way is the Earth pulling down on the box? You would say that it is pulling down. So I'd label an arrow pointing downward, and I would label this FG, force of gravity, and then, of course, I need to do on by. So I'm going to write on the box by, in this case, it's going to be the Earth, because the Earth is pulling it down. I would not write gravitational field or anything else like that. The actual object that is pulling it down is Earth, on box by Earth. Then I think about this, and I'm like, okay, what objects are touching it? I told you not to do that. Let's try this again. What objects are touching it? Well, I go back to my list, and I say, is there any strings in this? The answer is no. So I'm like, okay, there is no FT. Is the box moving, or is the box wanting to move but not moving? The answer is actually no in this case. It's not wanting to slide down a ramp, or it's not being pushed and normally would move. Is the object moving right now and has some kinetic frictional force? No. Cross that off. And normal forces, I'm like, oh, wait, the table is touching it, right? So the table is exerting a normal force. I know that it's a normal force because this is a 90-degree mark there. So I go on over and I say, okay, my normal force is going to be straight up. I would label this Fn. And, of course, I would try to think, okay, it's a normal force on what by what? It's going to be on the box 
by the table. And you'll notice that again, my system being the box, notice that it's always on the box, on the box. I'm always talking about the box because that is what that dot is representing. So that is on by notation. That is my force diagram. I say, okay, knocked out all the Fn. Is there any other objects touching the box? The answer is no. So I'm going to say that's probably all the forces that I have. And then going on over here, um, label what forces are equal with congruent markers. Um, I know that the table has to exert the same amount of force up on um, the box that the earth is pulling it down. So I can mark those things congruent. This is my final force diagram for the box on the table. Very, very, very simple example. We will start using a lot more of these in class. Um, so this is force diagrams. These are the types of forces. Um, this is going to be an utmost important piece, these force diagrams right here. In order to draw good force diagrams, you need to know all that stuff up there. Utmost important piece for basically the rest of physics. Make sure that you feel comfortable and bring in any questions. If you got them right now, write them down on your piece of paper. Any questions that you might have with force diagrams. Thanks for listening. Have a good night.